Hey guys, welcome back. Today, everything's in chaos today. I got so many projects on the go, so many work things related today. But today I have something special. I have another box of critters arriving today. And because it's been so crazy, I'm completely not prepared for it. Now that's not fair. I do have all the supplies I needed and they've been here for a while, but I actually have to put it together quickly. So let's go whip something together quickly for these animals before they arrive. And then we're gonna do an unboxing. Things are happening. I got stuff to all the shelves, the whole room's coming apart real quick, but I know all these projects are happening so fast. It's not like I forgot, I have all the supplies here to go. But because these animals, what I've got to backtrack a little bit here. You guys know about the different vivariums and some of the different builds we've been doing. Well, I want to put critters into those different things. Not just the bioactive with the isopods and the springtails, but I actually want to put living animals into these environments and stuff. And I want to set up the environments and tailor the environments for very specific animals. Now, if you remember a while back, probably about a year ago, I got the green light from my wife for upstairs in that weird little alcove that we have. We have this weird little space. It's about the size of a, it looks like we should be putting a refrigerator into an alcove in the middle of our living room. It's a very odd space, but the wife gave us a green light and we're gonna be building a nice big vivarium down the road that's gonna go there. And it's gonna be a very specific Amazonian type biotope. So as I was saying, I'm leaning towards kind of an Amazonian type, uh, type side of a stream sort of thing. Now I have several different types of orchids and most of the orchids I have being an Amazonian based that a lot of them get too big. So I have some Phragmopidiums. I'll show you a picture of what they kind of look like, but these are lady slippers that grow in areas where their feet stay wet all the time. And then I have some different types of Cattleyas and Lelias and things like that that often get far too large to accommodate in other than a very, very large vivarium, like this one. Critters that are coming here, and they are, they're basically captive bred hatchlings, which is awesome. Always support local if you can. Always support getting captive bred. And uh, these ones are captive bred, so they've been line bred to get this exceptional color. So I'm really, really stoked about showing these. And this vivarium is going to be built around them. However, these are only hatchlings, meaning these guys are only probably going to be about a foot long. You might have already guessed of what they're going to be. If you haven't, well, you can wait for the unboxing. All right, guys, we're back in the lair and we've got the new box of critters right here, ready to go. It weighs almost nothing. And there's, the animals that are in here are actually, as I mentioned, they're just juveniles. They're probably only going to be about a foot, maybe 14 inches in size. So I guess you've probably guessed already, these are going to be snakes or serpents. So the two snakes in question are a male and female pair. They're not a, they're, they're a sexed pair. They're not a breeding pair by any means. These are still babies. And these are Amazon tree boas. These are Corallus hortulanus. And these are absolutely outstanding, outstanding animals. Now I've kept them before over the years, and I think they're absolutely outstanding. Came with a nice little personal letter from Ben. I'm assuming that's what it is. Oh, it's a thank you card, and it's filled with all sorts. So there's his business logo. We're gonna put his link and all that stuff down there, because this guy does exceptional work. He's involved with SaveTheSnakes.org, so I've got all sorts of different stuff. I've got his business card, We'll put his address and everything up in there. Very, very cool, very slick, very professional. And that is something you will always come to expect when dealing with this individual. Now, this was sent overnight by FedEx. He uses a service, as most reptile people use a service that's called Reptile Runner. It's a service through FedEx, and it's people that are very, very experienced in dealing with shipping live animals. It's very, very well packaged. You know, solid piece of insulation, thick insulation. There's one. And there's two. So it doesn't look all that big. That's all we have in the box. So exceptionally well packaged. Another thing you would come to expect from dealing with somebody so professional. And these are Amazon tree boas. There's two of them in here, and they are bright yellow. I don't know if you can see the one's face, but the one's right there. 
I do not want to stress them out too much while they're in these little containers, but the other one is sitting right here. We now, we've got to go and get these guys set up in their temporary enclosures. Now, as I mentioned, for the vivariums like the beast, now the beast vivarium is going to get completely redone, and I guess this will eventually become the baby beast once we start the big one upstairs, but they're going to be completely gutted and changed. Instead of just accommodating and designing them just strictly for plants, I want to design them uh, not necessarily geographically, but I want them to, to kind of have a certain type of niche and more of a habitat for individual species. So instead of targeting just plant aspects, target the whole vivarium as a whole to try and make it a small ecosystem for a said animal that would work in it. And this, uh, this size of this unit is 3 by 3 by 18 And theoretically for these, once individuals, once they're full grown, they, I would probably house one without any issue whatsoever. But I think... That nice big vivarium that I'm going to build is going to be about 6 feet by 3 feet by 30 inches. That gives it a much more better footprint. And I think we'll probably do kind of a trickle waterfall. And that way we can plant some of the different orchids amongst it on, on, on the wall. And that though the water will trickle through and water it. I think it's just going to be a real cool rainforest kind of thing. And it's going to be a beautiful piece of living art literally right in our living room. So let's get these guys into their homes. All right. So countered a few problems here. So you guys saw what I started here. We basically got a nice little Sterilite tub. I did some hot glue so it's temporary so I could easily remove it. This is a tropical wood so it can handle the high humidity which is perfect for these animals. I put some, uh, some ventilation all along the top perimeter on all the units. This isn't the problem. These are perfect. These are exactly what I want. They're easy to maintain. They're easy to keep clean. This is what I've used before. I could put paper towel or some simple core and a nice clean water dish. Easy to maintain. Easy to work with the animal. That's not the problem. The problem was in the lids. So basically this is the lids that I was doing and I'm sorry, this is utterly atrocious. There's absolutely zero way I'm going to use this. I think this is looks awful. I think it just it's just terrible in every possible way. I was planning on hot gluing it. Now we could put stainless steel screws, but the same problem I have is this profile. If I'd gone with a slightly bigger tub where the hole that I was cutting for that clamp lamp fit all entirely within this space it probably would have been a lot easier. But because of the profile differences, there's all these little pockets, the hot glue is just bloody awful to work with. And then you have all these little tiny braces and stuff that had to be cut and everything. From the inside, it doesn't look as bad, but I'm sorry, on the outside, it looks bloody awful. And uh, I would want to be able to put the heat source directly on that, and then I could put a few ventilation holes here. And the theory was right, but it's just not, the application's just not gonna work for me. So we're going to do something temporary. We're going to be switching gears. I still have to get the snakes obviously set up because they're sitting in that box over there and they got to get into some tubs. So what are we going to do? We're going to move some stuff around back there and we're going to accommodate it because this light fixture generates probably enough heat. Now this snake in particular, Amazon tree bows, do not really require a lot of extra, extra, extra heat. And my room temperature right now, where it's summertime and us not having air conditioner, you know, this is probably easy to go. There's a nice orchid in bloom there, a nice little Lelia purpurata, another Brazilian species, so it's going to be perfectly cool for that vivarium. Another flower over there. Look at all that fancy stuff. So, what's the plan then? Our plan is we're going to get them set up temporary there. We're going to put a glass or acrylic sheet as a lid, unless I go up to somehow to Walmart and buy two more tubs, but I don't really want to do that. And what's the long-term plan, Figs? Well, the long-term plan is, I don't know if you guys know by now, but I've landed those toke geckos, those six hatchling toke geckos on the video that just came out a week or so ago. They're in there. That one is completely empty. So I'm thinking, what better? These look absolutely outstanding if I want to set these up as our burial enclosures. But to do that, a lot of things have to happen. I have to change the whole system around here. They're both planted. This one's not doing well with plants. This one, the lid is, uh, is, is the old mesh, but I glued acrylic down on top of it. This one here, I removed the, net, the mesh and made it into a full acrylic top, intending it to house spiders, because I think this originally was housing the indoor ornamental. So I have to make some changes, some modifications to be able to put some heat sources above that. Now I will be able to use the heat source that is currently over this. This is one of those deep dome Zoomed ones. You can't see it because it's dark, obviously. I'm sure I'm going to open this and all the geckos are going to come flying out of me. But basically it's a deep dome Zoomed one. It's got a small heat source and it's got a UVB. I can easily get pick up two more of those and I know that those would work and then I only have to take out half. And I think in the placement of the room, I think that'll look absolutely slick. Now I'll be able to do that. I think we have to go and take this mini beast. 
I think we're going to get a big beast to go there, a big three-footer, and it'll be a three-footer above a three-footer. And then we're going to do this one, and we're going to modify this one in a week or two when I get back. We're going to take this one, change it all up, do the foam, do the whole thing, and make a nice super slick environment for the Tokay geckos. I think that'll be absolutely slick, fully planted up, everything going bioactive. I think that'll be slick. It's going to take some time, so you might not see it for a month or so, but that'll go good, and then we get those guys there. So, in the meantime, we have to get these two guys set up temporarily on these things. Let's get it done. It never seems to end, man. So, this idea is what we just talked to him. This isn't going to work either. <laughs> Where is this not going to work? Because by gluing that one branch in there, it might be a millimeter too long or something, and it's distorted the shape of the plastic a little bit, that even the weight of the glass doesn't hold it down. So, to me, having one that's completely flat with a glass lid, not a problem, that'll work. So, I thought something even better. That one enclosure that's right there, the top one that you can't see it because it's kind of dark, but I'm gonna flip it around here, put the light on. Okay, this is the one we're talking about. This one here is ready to go. It's fully planted, bioactive. It's got some branches in it and it's got good ventilation up top. What I'm gonna have to do is I will have to modify this one shortly, but it will have accessory heat coming from this unit right here for the toe case. So I think I'm gonna land one of the two here. And out of the two, the male is decidedly larger than the female. So I think we're going to land the male in that enclosure temporarily. And then when we're down the road, we're going, sorry, we're going to add the female into one of these here, just one of them. And I'll cut the lid to fit this unit better. So it'll be no issue. Solves both problems quick and easy. Land one in there. And eventually, as I said, we'll go and make the change. Look at that beautiful baby boy. Just outstanding. Well, you ain't good. Want to go see? Says, uh, no, I'm good. Need a drink? absolutely love Amazon tree boas. I'm amazed it's taken me this long to get back into them. But when you have a quality breeder like Vannon, I don't even know if Vannon actually bred this, but anything that Vannon's going to represent or sell is absolutely top-notch quality. He has such a solid reputation. I saw these and he said, you want them? Yeah, of course I had to say yes. I think they'll be absolutely outstanding. All right, the other one's the little girl. You know, we're gonna get that little girl set up. We're gonna use that basic Tupperware container, Sterilite container. She's got a water dish, we've got some core. I gave it a slight misting down, increased the humidity a little bit. We're going to get her in here and we're just going to let her de-stress. Now before, without getting all that coconut chip or uh, the little tiny pine chips and stuff, repti chip in there, we're going to take her out this way. Come on. There she is. Very inquisitive. They're often known to be kind of waspy, snippy little snakes and stuff like that. And they're not necessarily little. They can get to be six feet or so. But uh, they're completely harmless. The bite from them is nothing. So come on. Let's take you out of here. Let's put you in here. And then we'll take you out of here. So we don't get all your repti chip all over everything else. Come on. Come on. Oh, yeah. You want to see stuff. Yes, you're okay. You're okay. You don't have to coil up. It's okay. Come on. Oh, you don't want to bite me. That's not very nice. And there she is. I just didn't want to get all that repti chip into her enclosure. So. Now 
going to keep her in there. Now, as a member, this is just temporary. Now we're going to put a good solid lid on it. Got ventilation on all the sides. So this will work just temporarily until we can get that other closure ready to go. Well, as you guys can see, they've settled it in both absolutely perfectly. They're absolutely thriving. They both took their first meals. Absolutely amazing quality animals. And this is the type of animal, the quality of animals that you can expect when you deal with someone like Vannon over at Canadian Ophidiophile. So as always, thank you kindly for watching, my friends. Till next time, take care.